I'm 
How is the sound now? Does it? Oh, no good. I, I really don't know what's what's. What's happening with my live streams? Actually, it's better now. I can hear it's a bit better. Nailed it. Oh, good. Now I have to just find the... Okay, now I will take this off. No idea, no idea what was going on. I'm really sorry about this. It took also, again, like four minutes. I started five minutes early and don't know what happened. I just don't know what I did, but I hope it works now because this is so embarrassing. And, and what's really bad about this when you have a bad sound is that, okay, it's no big deal when you're watching it live. You might want to wait and, and, and make some fun, fun comments, which I really like in the chat. And I think that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. And let's let me set everything up here. Yeah, Get this uh, everything set up, and uh, it was very interesting to see your light and shadow images, as you will see in this live stream that we will start looking at the photographs in a moment. It was uh, really a pleasure to to. Uh, receive all those images and unfortunately of course i can't show you all the images i would like to do so but it will take too much time let me turn that bit down it would take too much time to go through all those images i have 31 images and that's almost half of the image that i got and as usual the standard of the images is quite high and and i'm really glad because light and shadow is one of the most important things in photography 
let's see if we have any uh dave nelson is says in saying that uh, you made the payment you made the payment to those russian hackers that hijacked you peter yeah i hope that nobody's gonna hijack this live stream last time i had the q a there was a big storm of trolls that started to spam with the funny comments and now we have the picture is freezing i don't believe this picture is freezing is it not really sure what happened can you is, is, is the picture still freezing yeah there's some some problems with the maybe it's the connection that i have picture is good freezing over some somewhere it's better it froze a moment ago okay there might be some problems with the bandwidth which is always always one issue well, let's hope that this will go better but let's start with the images and here we have the the first image right here and let's turn the image on and this image is from randy and i really like the the uh, thing he said on on the commenting his image this was an assignment when in art school had to go high up and duplicate similar photo from long ago i really love the the concept that you're going back to your image and duplicate it i, I really love that thing and and about the image it's really well made and it, it's clearly light and shadow and this one odd thing is that when it probably a kind of like a church or whatever tower that is where, where there's the the uh, uh what do you call the shadow and then you have the the uh tree that's all lit up so it's kind of like why there is light on in the middle of the shadow it's probably because the sun is shining from that direction and, and kind of like sweeping the uh the light rays on top of that tree but i think this is really kind of like surreal images with the with the circles and the on the on the square and then you got all these odd tables there are a few people looking at and, and long shadows you know you get really nice and long shadows when you have the sun coming from a low angle it's early in the morning and later at night when the shadows are at its best i think this is a good start for this this really a bit crazy surreal image but i love it i love it well done randy and then a totally different kind of image about light this is uh, from john w ehrman a velvet ground seal leaf i love photographing nature close up, close up in dappled angular sunlight for leaves this brings out the texture in remarkable ways and that's true and as you can see the the texture and all and the shape and 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 the feeling of the you can almost touch it on your screen it's really 3d and that's that's what light and shadow is all about it's all about 3d and that's that's something that is really a thing to remember and then also if you look at the shadow area let me turn myself into that that side if you look at the top right corner of the image you have black background and you have pretty dark uh, leaf but when you have the 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 light coming from the right direction you get nice rim light around the 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 leaf so it's, it's really bright and really nice rim light all around the leaf and i think it's it's very nice and also the the way that it's or the composition is made is really really great it's not the obvious and that's why i love it and it's still that the, like the top right corner is 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 really nice the, the way it's it's uh, uh or, or made the composition in, in in that part of the image it's and, and then of course you have the brightest area where you're looking at it's uh, yeah this is a simple and nice image and it's it's about seeing the light because usually i don't know how big this leaf is but to see the light is something that you need to look around without looking around you won't see it you have to grab the moment when it's there S something like this for example doesn't take too long to have 
or, or, or the light doesn't stay there too long. It, it's just a breeze of a second when it's gone. A bit wind, a cloud or something. And a couple of minutes, it will be a totally different direction towards the, the leaf. So you have to be quick and you have to be ready when this opportunity of an image like this comes. I really like this one too. And let's go to the next one. This is from Philip Dente. The magic of right place, right time, right light, and always having your camera with you. And uh, this is a totally different kind of portrait. You would think that you would want to light the face. But as you can see, the light comes from the behind of the subject. You can see it from the right side of the image. It's really bright from there. There's a, probably a window out there or, or, or some other big opening where the light can come in. And then you have the, all the faces in the shadow. It's not that dark as it is in the, in the live stream because the, you know, the live stream is always a bit darker and, and more saturated. And then you have the light on the hands. And sometimes photographing the hands is something that tells a lot about the person. It doesn't have to be a face. A portrait can be a portrait without the face showing it, it it can be the hands for example this guy is or this old man is is telling a story to someone somebody is talking to his and he's talking to someone and, and talking with his hand like like i'm doing now and then you have the the light lighting up the hands it's it's a remarkable way of doing of course it's uh, maybe a bit uh, too dark especially on the on the live stream but still i think this this type of portrait is is uh, something different. It's it's not the obvious. I re I really like this one too. And let's go to the next one. And then we have this abstract image from uh, this is from Budapest, a Turkish monument. This is the half closed gate, half moon, and behind it stairs, just barely touched by the last uh, rays of sun. I chose to edit it black and white to emphasize the lights and dark areas. Yeah, I think this image most likely works best when it's black and white because it's kind of like an abstract shape. And this image could be oriented any way. It, it would look still interesting and, and it's kind of not too obvious if you don't know the place or if there wasn't the explanation what it is. It it's, um, uh, wouldn't be, you know, it's just an abstract shape, which, which is, of course, as it is, very good. But when you know that it is a, a monument, then, then it makes more sense. The only small slight thing that I would do on this is to the top right corner, there is a slight amount of light right there. I might clone it out, but uh, not really sure if that would do good or bad to the image. I would at least check it out. It might be good because... Otherwise, it would be totally black. Now it's kind of blocking the 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 view back to the image when there is a, a slight barrier of light. And if we look at this image and, and we start looking at it, we start looking at it from the bottom and our eye goes around the arc and, and then start looking at the image. So that uh, top right-hand corner might be good there. It's something to to consider. I'm not really sure how... Uh, how uh, important that is it might be because usually in an image a small thing will be the most important thing without some small things as we will see in these images there it's it's remarkably important to have some small things like like a small person in an image just to make the image more interesting but as as, as you can see in the standard of images is really great. I was totally astonished when I saw this and, and looked at those images and was, you know, my heart was crying that I had to leave so many good images out because it was it was good. And I'm, I'm so happy that that the, the quality is so so high. Let's continue and see. See the next one. And then we have a very classical uh, kind of like a, a landscape or cityscape or I don't know what, what you would call this, a landscape maybe. And uh, the reflection on the water is really nice. This could have been, you know, an image in the last uh, assignment that I had, the reflections. 
And then I really like that you had the sun in there. And this one was uh, uh, Fredrik Bellin, I think it was, yes. Yeah. And I'm really glad that you left the, the sun in the image. It gives a nice contrast and it kind of like gives the the light away in a way you can you can see where it comes from then you have this a big shadow of the of the tree and usually these kinds of images are really nice when you have a big interesting looking tree and then you have the shadow in front and sometimes using a wide angle on an image like this would do good this one probably is uh, i don't know if we, let's see if we have the the metadata here it's uh uh it's a tray it is a 12 millimeter but looks like it's been cropped a bit which is of totally okay it doesn't really make the uh, wide angle look very obvious here but I, I also like that it's black and white i think color would have been too much on this hard to say though but uh, but I, I really like the the black and white it, it's kind of more of a light and shadow because you don't have any colors to do the image. You, you only have black and white and everything between. And that's why usually black and white images need to have a great light because you can't play, uh, play around with colors. Of course, you can play around with shapes, but usually shapes looks better if there is a good light. And let's continue. And then Wilford, I call it mystery what is waiting at the top of the stairs the image was taken in an old abandoned barn when the sun was just right you're totally right it is an interesting image and one good thing about this image is, is that you really start thinking at where are those ladders going what's up there in the darkness and usually with an image that you start asking questions and what's going on what's behind there is a good image it's uh, i've said it probably every time <laughs> in a live stream i say that like what what uh, diana arbus an american photographer said in the 60s that uh, a good image raises more questions than gives answers and this is towards that i would make it a bit more mysterious by adding some contrast to it and this could also be a good one with black and white but i really like the the idea of mystery and the direction of the light is very good and you have the back if you look at the back wall actually that one is good in color and looks a bit better in the live stream you have some colors in the back which is also a bit mysterious where does those colors come from is it the color of the light or are there some reflections from the sky from from uh, leaves that makes it green or what what is it and that's why it is it is really nice and actually when i said about black and white it could work but also like this no problem being it color because of the back back wall there that's really really something i don't know how how much there is a delay on the live stream maybe i uh, yeah I'm myself my live stream was a bit behind yeah but well done again well done again and this is one of those images that could have been also in the reflections and it would have made the the uh, assignment or the the live stream it would have been exhibited or shown there too yeah, let's see what it says um, i took this picture on a photo walk in switching uh, germany i could explore and take some photos in this beautiful city the position of the sun made some really pleasing shadows i hope that uh, correct was a correct uh let me check did i if i angel to love yeah it was it was and uh, these are probably some reflecting mirrors that are shaped of of humans on somewhere and i really like the the way that this, the shadows are towards us so that the sun is on the other side and still there are reflections but you don't see the photographer in the reflections at least I didn't. One thing that could have been interesting to to go a bit further away and so we could see a bit more of the shadows. I don't know if that would have been possible because we don't know what's behind the the photographer. Maybe there was no room to go. Maybe there's a street or whatever. So it's always easy to say what should have been done at the scene. So I'm just suggest suggesting that 
taking a few few uh, steps back and, and having a bit more of the shadows. But I really like the the image, and and it's also a bit sur surreal because you start thinking of the image first and what's going on, and and then then you have the reflections. You got the old pitch black background, and then you have the street, the cobblestones, and then you have the shadows. It's there is many layers, and then you have kind of like another world inside those humans. It's is a it's I just love this image. It's it's huge. This is so I'm so excited about your images now that I, I can you know it's 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 so great. It's one of the best feelings to see how great stuff you've been doing. Yeah, that's that's uh, something else. And let's go to the next one. And this is Michael White. Uh, from what I can remember, I was walking home around midday and, and I just loved how the sharp the shadows of the bike was. It really caught my eye and I thought it would make a decent photograph. To make it a bit, to make it a bit more interesting, I tilted my iPhone camera f for a slight slanted perspective. Yeah, the, uh, tilting the camera is a, many times a really, really good way of making the image uh, a bit odd looking and, and add something to that image and, and you did the right thing that you tilted the camera maybe cropping a bit from the top so that we wouldn't see the cars on the on the top maybe the car on the on the left side is okay because it, it would be impossible to to cop but, but the the car that is parked right there in top of the image maybe you could uh, crop that away i'm not really sure how it would look maybe it's good it's there not not really sure but something that consider and check it out and uh, if, if you ever want to see interesting tilted or, or, or someone who tilted the camera check out Gary Vinogrand a very famous American photographer who used to do this that he used the wide angle and tilted to make a bit odd perspective and this reminds me of that type of camera tilting and as we can see you can do this with a phone an image like this it doesn't have to be a very fancy camera or 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 any any fancy equipment you can you can just uh, walk by something and grab it with your with your phone do that if if you you are into into photography you should do that having a camera all the time and sometimes it's the phone you have and then when you see something try to make the best image what you can do with your phone because the phone will restrict you a bit and you will need to think how can i manage this and that's also something to to consider if if you want to to be better sometimes uh, restricting yourself is a good thing so like using one lens and one body for a month for example and try to do everything with that equipment because sometimes if we have a whole lot of stuff we get lazy because we can switch the lens we can do everything but with one lens it might be a bit harder so you have to think and maybe learn something and think a bit differently you know let's let's continue but I, I i like this image but i would probably consider cropping it a bit from the top but the shadow is really great and you can see it's really hard sunlight because the edges of the of the um, shadow are really really sharp now then we have something uh, totally different this is from Jörg Hummerjohan a photograph called jump as a beginner in studio photography I'm teaching myself at each shooting with a simple setting how to deal with these distances and angles wall model flash me light formers and shadows not easy but making slow progress this one I like for two reasons in contrast so in contrast to soft boxes, I used a spot in quite a distance for harsh light and shadow and the creativity of the model. Second was the model's idea to jumping. Yeah, and this is uh, a very good uh, things that you said you're here about light. If you have a soft box that is really close, you usually the light is really soft. If you want a harder light, you need to move the lights further away from the subject. And if it's kind of like a hard light or snoot or, or gobo or what do you call the Fresnel light, then you will get something like this. And the shadow of this is really great. The, the, the hard part of this is, of course, is the 
the shadow, uh, it's it's a bit too big, in a way, because the the model is too far away from the from the wall. When you want the shadow, you should move the uh, model a bit closer. But then there is another catch. Then the shadow and the model will overlap. So this is kind of like a compromise. I like this image, and that's why it is here. And the direction of the light is totally okay when you have people. The light comes from the uh, top right. If we, if we look at from the photographer's perspective, the light has been over there in, in the light in, in, in on the right side. And having a kind of like a vignetting will make our eyes go to the middle. And having the shadow there makes the image interesting. This also could be done in, uh, the way that you would uh, composite two different images, have a different type of shadow. The girl jumping and then the shadow would be totally something different. Of course, that would be kind of like image manipulation, but it, on, on studio for portraits and, and studio photography like this, it would be totally okay. But uh, keep on keep on learning, but you have the right uh, ideas about using light. Softer light has to be closer and harder light has to be further away. That's why sunlight, direct sunlight is so harsh because it's so far away, even though it's a huge light source, but it's so far away, so it will be really directional and hard. But well done, well done. Now then we have this pretty classical sunset image with some stunning skies. And uh, this one I like because of the buildings there in the, in the bottom part. And one really important thing, there are lights in the windows. That's something without the lights in the windows, it wouldn't be so interesting. Now it is really interesting because we can kind of see the, the city a bit better and it pops up or pops out because of the lights and you have some street lights also. And then you got the mountains in the back and beautiful orange sky. And then you have the dramatic blue skies in the front, which is also kind of funny because usually the further away the things are, the more blue it gets in, the, fr the more front them they are, the warmer they are. So this is kind of like the reversed, which is interesting, which also makes this image really interesting. Like you saw in my opening shot, you, you, I had the, the blue mountains in the back, but here, here we have the blue in the front, which makes it a bit, bit odd and actually makes the, the blue sky also to fall upon us, which is which makes it more dramatic. I would probably cut some of the top and make it by 16 by nine, maybe. Not really sure because I really like the, I don't know, you can see my, my mouse. I can I really see it like this. So I would be careful to do that. But otherwise it would, would probably look more cinematic in a way when it was uh, like 16 by nine or some kind of like a panoramic look. But, and there is some room also to, to crop down here just slightly and then but it, it but I wouldn't ruin this because this is really nice and interesting it's really hard I'm sorry I'm not you know I'm so into these images I'm, I haven't seen any comments looks like Gotham City maybe it is I don't know let's go to the next one and this is um, uh, Peter Thring, I was in Helsinki for a trip. That wasn't the reason I picked this, because this image is from Helsinki, and I probably can recognize the place, not really sure. City at golden hour, climbed uh, climbed a big rock to soak the sun rays and enjoyed the view. The sun was setting and saw the frame with the person sitting on the rock to get this picture. I had to wait for 15 minutes. Good. Always wait if you don't get it in the first place. Sometimes it won't work, but usually waiting is rewarded. Before the person started to walk back, the picture was taken with Lumix G9 with Olympus 14 to 150 millimeter lens. And I was talking about a small detail in an image. 
without the person, this image would be a bit boring. But with the story, him waiting for 15 minutes in Helsinki, which is good, and waiting, and the sun is in a perfect position, you have the silhouette of the person, and you have a nice-looking sky. And I think I might know the place because there are the, the power lines there, but not, not really sure of the exact spot. But it's an interesting place, and since the sun is coming towards, you will have the silhouette. Some might think that it's too dark. You would need to have some details in the in the shadows, but no, I don't think so. I think this this one goes really nice. Maybe a a bit of a co adding a bit contrast and lowering a slightly the highlights would would probably do do good because it's it's a bit uh, smushy looking in the top, but otherwise it's uh, it looks really really nice. Okay, let's see the next one. And here we have Barry Wee, another portrait. Uh, I was out on a walk with my wife when I noticed the lamp creating a really dramatic distinction between the dark and the bright parts of the wall. I felt that the light and the clean straight lines helped to highlight my subject in the photograph. But I feel she's still too dark and she's competing for attention with the lamp. Please tell me what to do. Yeah, that's true. It is. The light is a bit too bright and the face is a bit too dark. What you could do is open up the shadows a bit and lowering the highlights. That would probably do good. And then I would maybe crop it a bit from the from the left side because well, I would actually at least I would look if if that works. But the the direction of the light and the shadows are really nice. I like the the shadow here in the in the in the bottom so I wouldn't cut this out at all. And then the shadow of the lamp itself, it's really interesting. But maybe uh, positioning her here could have been better because there's some kind of a shadow here. I don't know if it's maybe it's her shadow. There might be some other lights on on the other side because there's a shadow on both sides of her. I don't know where that light comes from. It doesn't show here, so it's a bit strange looking. But anyways, positioning her here could be better. But the problem here is that I I like the the composition. So this is a really hard. Uh, compromise that you have to make. I think the composition is perfect. She's right on the right spot. But then, as you said, the light isn't the way you liked it. And then you have to make a comprom compromise. If, if she was here, I don't think this would be so interesting. It would be too far away from the from the lamp. Now I think it's it's kind of like a, in a good balance. But I would uh, cut maybe this away. I'm not really sure. I would see how it looks. Maybe it's okay like this. Not really sure, but I, I really like this. This is a a bit different type of portrait. And then, then what I also like is that that you are on a walk and, you, and you're looking around. And and then, of course, I admire her that she, she was your model because sometimes when you're working with your wife, it's like, come on, let's go. Don't take a photograph again. You know, you know what I mean. So that's why I think this is this is really nice. Really nice, nice image. But yeah, there's a lot of mood, like someone says. And then we have... Um, well, there is no name. Uh, let me see who it was. Yeah, it was John. And you know what it was. It doesn't say here. The image was part of some uh, uh, shots against the light, but most didn't... Um, this image was part of some shots against the light, but most did not work out. Edited in Affinity Photo to color the snow. I tried black and white, but didn't work either. Yeah, I'm not really sure about the color of the of the snow. It 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 is interesting in a way, and shadow definitely can be blue because that's what it is. Because it's a reflection of light, or, or only light that hits the shadow is a reflection from the sky, which is blue, and that's why shadows are often blue. Sometimes blue shadows are uh, kind of like a, a bit uh, smushy looking, and they they bit they look a bit dirty. In, in because it's it's um, it's not clean when it's when it's really blue. This one is kind of bright blue and it, it's okay because it it uh, makes the weather look really cold. You have the snow and then you have blue. Usually, it's cold when the weather is blue when it's snowing, or there is snow on the ground. The shadow, yes, very nice, and also the shadow or the the silhouette of the of the tree. So there's kind of like two shadows. 
this part here is a, a bit too dark maybe it's it's hard but on the other hand it's kind of like a arrow so you have an arrow here and then you have an arrow here and then you have the the diagonal uh, lines here so it's a uh, it's not bad but it's 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 maybe a bit unbalanced but maybe that's the the beauty of the image that there is some some small distractions on here yeah it is it's it's a uh, very hard weather to photograph when you have you know blue sky and, and snow you know it's it's this is probably the only only way you, you have really bright snow bright sky and then you have the the landscape that's totally dark so silhouettes are, are a good way yeah good one as you said black and white probably wouldn't work on this because I, the blue color is is interesting and i'm not really sure if blue snow is good or not but it's, in, it's interesting anyway and then we have this uh, from Sebastiano. On a sunny day, light beams through the window. Yeah, this is uh, something beautiful too. And and I like the the framing of this. I think that it uh, usually I don't like you know white frames, but on this one I think it's it it has its place. And also the usually the uh, if you have a a portrait oriented image, usually I like it to be a bit wider. But on this one. It's it's uh, it it works because of the of the shape of the of the or, or there's the shape on the door and then you have the the nice shadows coming from there and then you have some darkness here maybe this um, is a bit too dark on the on the live stream there are some details here but not too much maybe it could be a bit bit brighter the shadow part but it's it's a beautiful image and this is something that you know I I could hang on my wall which is quite a lot to say from an uh, about an image but i really like this one it's it's simple and clean and and again you need to see these things it's i always say that you need to see these things of course if we have eyes we can see but still we don't see and that's that's really important to to learn and that's why i think it's uh, really important to have a camera with you all the time so that you can really uh, or, or it helps you to see and when you start making images it just you know it, it helps you to see and, and then you will start getting images you will get a lot of bad images but who cares if you have a couple of few good ones and you know which the good ones are then you're all good to go no problem because when you have an exhibition somewhere you can see let's say that someone has an exhibition of 30 images in, in a gallery and they're all stunning images there's probably 3,000 images that are garbage, but the person knew which 30 ones are the best ones. So keep on shooting to get this. I really love this image. This is beautiful. And then this is uh, from Wren, Australian bush scene. Early morning sunlight through the through in, uh, uh, well, sorry early morning sunlight touching the trees and areas of the ground the smoke caused by near bushfires has hanging around giving me the feeling of a calm and relaxed mood also the advantage of creating the sense of depth in the landscape yeah the you know it's 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 funny because the bushfires of course they are not very very good uh, it was a few years ago i think it was they were really bad ones and i don't know if this is from from that time but this is a beautiful landscape totally totally beautiful landscape and it is all about light and the smoke adds to the mood and and the colors are beautiful it's it's usually magenta color is not nice but but for somehow on this one because it is a compliment is it comp opposite color of of green and you have some green here and and the green and magenta this shade of magenta works really well not sure about the 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 framing of this maybe yeah i'm not really a big fan of the frame but it doesn't matter if if, if, it's, if it's your decision you like it then it's totally fine but otherwise this image is is beautiful you have everything here you get you have the front you have some light in the front then you have light in the back and and, and you but still it's quite busy image but still kind of we have the light on 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 this side of the image on the other side of the image as you can see from from here we have the the brighter light and here are some some uh, darker areas but you still have some details here no there is no 
maybe here it is a bit, a bit, bit black spot, but, but anyways, you, you really have a nice shade of, of uh, different colors and light, and you have, you know, the light and shadows are playing with each other on this. And then, of course, the, the smog, which was, or the, or the smoke, which was an, an unfortunate, unfortunate thing on this image. But another great, great image. Like I said in the beginning that I was really happy to see this because this has probably been the best images on any of my live streams so far, on these feedback live streams on so far, which I'm really glad that the kind of like the, the, the standard is getting higher and higher. Of course, it means that it's harder to get your image on the, on the live stream. But, um, you know, you have to be good to be qualified for for these live streams. <clears throat> and then we have um, uh, Michael Nerua. He wrote a, uh, a long story. And uh, what was uh, really, yeah, the name of this was The Shadow Side of Life. And yes, it is The Shadow Side of Life. And what I like about this is that the the homeless guy is in the shadow. Because then you, he's, you know, you can't recognize him. I, I assume it's it's it's, it's him. And uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of, you know, photographing homeless people on the streets unless you are a journalist or or making a reportage of it. That's a different thing. But as a hobbyist or tourist, don't photograph them. It's the unfortunate people, and you don't want to exploit them. And I'm not saying that this one is. And the reason is that it is in the dark. If if this guy was in the in the in the light, then it would be not nice, in my opinion. But the good thing also is that um, when he is in the shadow, you don't recognize him at the, you know, in the instant. You're just looking at the image, and you get all this nice uh, walkway with the with the thing. What do you, what do you call this? Arcs or whatever this this passage under this beautiful beautiful uh, uh, ceiling, and then. You see this guy, and then the name, the shadow side of life. I think it's it's nice, it's nice. And then I uh, like these also. When you have a pretty harsh light, you get a really nice uh, round things from the when the light is coming from this side in, inside the the corridor. It's 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 a it's a good image. But be careful when when photographing homeless people or anybody that might get embarrassed by t if, if you take their photograph. So always, always be, be nice. Okay, well, let's see the next one. This one is from Lars. This image shows the silhouette uh, of a walking man on a bridge pedestrians, on a bridge for pedestrians, which is underneath a bridge of cars. I enjoyed the triangular shapes on the side of the bridge and the contrast between the bright uh, art artificial light and the dark surrounding. After visiting this spot about four or five times, I finally ended up with a pleasing image. In, a, in post, I added more contrast. Yeah, that's also a good, good point there. Don't give up. If you, don't, if, if you have in mind an image in your mind, for example, you see a spot, if it's in your town, of course, if you're, if you're traveling, it's a different thing. But if you know a place where you can go again and again, and if you have something in your mind that you want to photograph, then what you should do, you should just keep on going because when you get it, you feel really good. It's a rewarding thing. And, and you know, if you have made hard work for the image, it's so rewarding. So always, uh, I'm not saying dream, but uh, try to pre-visualize when you're somewhere. And, you, okay, this would be a great image if this and that happened. Let's see, if the light came from there, if someone would walk there, if it was morning, if it was night. Yeah, and then you should go out and try that. Have I talked about images and not showing them? We haven't seen the last two pictures. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This one. Close your eyes. <laughs> oh no. Sorry. <laughs> I just carried away. This is this is embarrassing. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I can see again. Great. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's too bad. I should have 
earphones and you could be screaming someone could scream <clears throat> so did oh, okay it was um, this image but this we saw but not the homeless okay here we go sorry about this my mess <laughs> we haven't seen the last two pictures this is <laughs> great going good job peter keep the good work <laughs> Keep up the good work. Okay. Yeah, the homeless is on its way. Because I'm watching the live stream. It's not there yet. Let's wait that it's there. Yeah, I agree that the, the landscape is a great shot. But this one was the homeless, what I was talking about. And, and why it is good that the, the person is in the, in, the, in the shadow. I'm really so sorry. Sorry, Michael, about about your image that I was I was really talking about it quite a bit. But you probably now that you see the image, you you can you can kind of like uh, build in the pieces that that uh, I was talking. And now that you're looking at the image, and I don't know if you could be interesting to to hear what type of image did you pre visualize when I was uh, talking about the image without showing it to you. <laughs> oh, you ask. Oh, William is asking about my smartphone. Yeah, it's an Aura. Yes, it's an Aura. Aura ring. All right, but we probably seen this image now, and and uh, and then we have this image with uh, uh, where where I was talking about uh, going back to. To the place uh, several times if you have the possibility then you can uh, kind of like uh, pre-visualize an image if you have an image in mind and then go back there if, if it's possible and and try to get it then then you will learn and it's also rewarding you will feel good and let's uh, let's continue with the now i'm keeping the image like this so so that <laughs> You will see the actual images and then we have this um, image from um, i think it was the payatana yeah it's a, it's um actually not that far from from helsinki it's a couple hours drive around that so it's a bit north from helsinki this area and uh, what's great about finland is that uh, the light is quite good when we get it if it's raining then it's a different thing like it has been raining quite a lot here lately but like, if you look at this image, you have the sun in the middle. It's not actually that blown away like it, like it is on the on this live stream. And you have the image or the light right there in the middle. It, the, the the sun is probably setting behind those trees, behind the the woods. And then you have the tree on the right, uh, not the, the road on the right, which is an interesting part of the image. It kind of like leads us in. Of course, it, it's it's a funny way because it also leads us out of the image. But then when we see the tree in the middle, because it's the brightest part, or the behind the tree is the brightest part, we can see the the image. And we have a pretty interesting sky there too. And it's probably snowing because you have some odd stuff here quite close to the lens, which looks like it's snowing, which makes it more interesting. And then you have really, really nice shadows here, not too too dark, and then you but just enough to see the shape of the of the of the landscape so that it's going this way and it's uh, yeah it's it's really nice and i like the color of too it's a bit the dreamy color it's like it looks like there is some kind of like a, a dreamy filter on this i don't know if there is a filter being used but it looks like there is a slight mist filter which makes it more more uh, uh, mysterious i think yeah and the, and the, the slight softness is is really nice this could also make a good good image on the wall frame and you know frame it on the wall well done well done and then we have a very classical landscape or seascape with a long shutter speed because you can see that the the water is uh, moving here and, and the shutter speed is long enough but not too long 
that would lose the texture of the water. I'm not really big fan of of really really long shutter speed that would make the water totally still. I've done those. Im Oops, excuse me. I've done those images, but it's well sometimes it works, and then you have the sun on the right spot. The only small thing that I would do is to a, a lot, slightly correct the the distortion because of the the horizon is a bit curved just slightly so that it would be totally straight it's not a big deal but it would look more natural now it's a bit bit odd looking because of the of the the curved horizon and then what what i really like is the the uh, rock in the front and you have a beautiful light on the rock this is also a matter of maybe seconds, maybe minutes, so that the light hits that rock the way it does on this image. And I think that is something really, really good. Look at the shape on the, on, and you can, you can really feel the texture on this, on this. And then you have the golden light here. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful light here. Maybe this sun is a bit, bit too overexposed, but it, it would have been really hard to get this with one image maybe some uh, exposure blending where you blend two different images one exposed with this and the other one with this and then try to blend them together that would have probably made this a bit more interesting but uh, it goes well with like this also so and also what i like is the the small stone right there on the on the on the sun or what do, what do you call that that when the sun reflects from the water and there is the the rock kind of bothering us when we look at the image but bothering us in a good way yeah this one also a good one and this is a uh, something that could have been also an image with the sky because the, the sky also look interesting so this moment was a very good uh moment or, or very good situation to take different types of images and i'm glad that you you cropped quite tightly tight from here because this doesn't look very interesting that all the interesting part is is here on this side of the image so so also the if we look at the composition the the dark area of of here kind of like makes the makes the rock kind of like take our view inside the image that's really really something and let's um thank you very much stanislav appreciate it a lot thank you and then we have this interesting image of a dog uh, let's see when the puppy decided to lie down between the sunlight and the shadow in the post i decided to push the shadows to create black negative space and thus highlights the dog's face the result was kind of a class clara sucaro in spanish or Chiarusco or in Italian. Don't know what that means, but but yeah, that that was good. Good point about the the black shadow or the shadow. So we darken the shadow, so there's no distracting elements. And then, of course, if you look at the the composition, you have some black in front of the dog and also in the back. And then you kind of like have a a beam of light, and and it almost looks like the dog is behind something. You would. You would think that it's behind something, but it's it's behind, or it's in the shadow, and then it sticks the nose out to the to the white. This is a very tricky situation when you're doing the exposure because you have really huge and bright lights, and then you have really dark shadows. and And I like the saturation too. You have some color contrast here too. You got the yellow or brown, yellowish face of a dog, and then you have green grass, and then you have some. It looks like it's a blue, but it's it's a shadow and 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 it's blue that way. But but anyways, it, it's a, it's a nice color contrast from the from the blue shadow. It looks almost like he the dog has some some clothes on, but probably it's just a shadow. Not sure. Most likely it's a shadow. Yeah, someone uh, was saying that uh, maybe cropping the 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 green yeah i'm not really sure yeah the green is quite intense and that might be uh a bit uh, too much and also yeah that's a good point about the pause maybe they could 
uh, lower the highlights a bit. It's a bit too dark, uh, dark not dark, but too 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 bright. That's true. But I don't think it's it's um, not a big issue because it's kind of like behind the grass and you don't really see them. But it, it's a tricky situation. But I think you've done done well with the with the composition and again not the usual way of photographing and that's why it's interesting when you can when you can pull something off that looks good that is something different that is really really great <clears throat> and let's see <clears throat> yeah javier is here can you tell us what that what that word is in english do you know chiaroscuro it doesn't uh, no idea. Yeah, you're welcome, Javier. Um, let's take the next one. Now we have a totally abstract image. And this is, uh, let me see what it says. Bricks in the evening light, wall of community uh, center in Grost in Denmark, where I live. Our area is well known for its brickyards. So the builders tried to show them off. Well, they did. And a perfect time to make this image the the direction of the light is totally it's it's just perfect because you have different shades of black and different shades of gray and and of course what makes it also interesting the the reflection from the from the bricks are dip, a, dip, a bit different which makes it a more live the the whole uh what do you call the the structure and this is one of those abstract images and and what's what's really uh, 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 funny. It's kind of like an optical illusion. It starts to break here. You don't really know. It's it's like different stuff in the top right hand corner than it is here because of course it's because of the the perspective. And I think this is uh, one of those images that you would kind of like start watching and your eyes just going like you know hypnotized. This yeah, it's some one of those images that you can just sit and look at. I really like this because it's it's odd, <laughs> but I can I can understand why they make this wall if it's if it's known for for its brickyards. Then of course they try to do something something really nice and show off what they can do. It's a lot of work to do one of these because you have to you know lay the bricks by hand. Really like I want to see this place when I when it's possible to travel. Oh, okay. Now, Chiarusco is in Caravaggio painting, so it was my bad. I should have known stuff like that, but I didn't. Okay, let's uh, continue. Yet another good image. This is this is a parade of great images. Then we have. Um, well, let's see. This is a heavily backlit image of an uh, Anhinga perch in the sun while dyeing its feathers. It's a, it is a unique water bird that does not have the oils in its feathers to prevent them from absorbing water. As a result, it's easy for them to stay underwater longer than other diving birds to catch fish. I like the silhouette and the patterns of the water in the background. Yeah, it's important. The patterns in the background are really important because then it makes some texture. If it was pure white, then it would be, you know, I don't know what 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 would it be actually, but I really like the the silhouette and it's perfectly sharp silhouette too. There's slight movement down here which makes it uh, alive, so it's not just you know some uh, statue or something, but it is really a live live bird that you can see and and the shades of of gray on the background is really great and and you have some shapes here too and then you have the bird which is in perfect position so you have a very good uh, also the the composition and and the and the direction where you took the photograph so that you can have the so you can really see the shape of the bird and also you 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 have like great details so it's it's pin sharp because you can see the, the feathers here on the on the head of the bird it's um, it's really 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 interesting image and, and well done well done image and a bit different bird photography image. I'm just, I had to check that, that I have the image on there. So I'm not talking like five images and no image is showing. Maybe, but that would make your imagination <laughs> better. All right. 
So let's go so that we can we can do this tonight. And then we have another corridor type. I just this corridor or, or walkway or passage or whatever this is called. And this was uh, if I com yeah, it was in um, I was walking in the old military hospital of Antwerp. This is from Dominique. This hospital was converted to apartment and some modern elements were added. I used my iPhone, which was the only camera that I had on me. Yeah, like the, like the cliche says, the best camera is the one that you have with you. And, and again, as I said earlier, there was one other uh, iPhone photograph. Then just use your phone when you need to need to take photograph if you don't have your camera of course it's always better to have the camera with you but like me i'm not always having my camera with me so i will use my iphone too to photograph some some elements and i really like the shapes and the colors and uh, not the colors but the, the shades of gray on this you have this uh, nice looking wall with some shadows and then you have these really sharp shadows and this is kind of interesting that not really sure if these are shadows. They look like shadows, but they are soft, probably because the light is reflecting from from the bricks. And then on this, I don't know where that light comes from because they are not uh, sharp, these shadows. Maybe it's something on the wall. I'm not sure, but it looks really interesting. And then you have the, the, the black ceiling with some details in the top, which is good. And on this side, you have the shapes that you see over here so this is uh, also something if you could you know start spinning this image this is also one of those uh like hypnotizing images because it's uh it's really interesting and i actually i tried this image just i rotated it. it's a it's an interesting image it doesn't matter which way it is and that's also a good sign for for an abstract image if you can kind of like turn it and it looks it still looks good that's also one way of of checking your images and the composition is to to flip your image 180 and then if it still looks good then most likely the composition is good so try that sometime if, if you are in a doubt that if this is good if it looks good when you flip it 160 degrees uh, 180 degrees then then if it works then it most likely works the other way around too okay and let's see another close-up. And this one is, um, I thought I would try to capture an image using soft evening light catching. Uh, crocosmia leaves in my garden. I took a number of raw images with my 60 millimeter macro lens and did final processing using DxO Pure Raw into Lightroom where I did a crop and few other tweaks. I did convert black and white, but preferred the color image. Yeah, I would uh, also agree that, that this one works nice with color because you have nice green colors and then it kind of like tells more what it is. Of course, if it's black and white, it would be more abstract and also quite interesting. But here we have the direction of the light. You can see that it comes from this side because of the shadow. You can see the shadow from here. You can always read the direction of the light by looking at the shadows and that's that's one way of doing and uh, the light is a bit hard it's not really really soft yet on this but it doesn't matter i think it's it's good because you don't have really deep shadows you have some detail in the shadows and you have some detail in the in the bright lights too and and you can really feel the texture on these leaves because of the direction of the light it makes the the uh, when it comes from the side like this it, it kind of pops up the the small texture on the on the surface of the leaves and this this why is very interesting and um, it looks like it's easy to easy to make an image like this but it actually it's not because you need to uh, really concentrate on the composition so that you have the the uh, shadows in the right position because here is a bit uh or, or or the um, the leaves here are a bit further away i'm not sure how it would look if, if it was something like this so that there would be more on the same level not really sure maybe this is good because it gives some depth to the to the image so it's you kind of like start from here and then you start wandering around and start kind of like diving in into the to the leaves i'm not not sure you have to there should be an, another image of a uh, like side by side a bit different image but otherwise this this is interesting and that that's why 
also the image is quite interesting because of this area. So it's always like a compromise and you start thinking that like, what if, but, but we have to sometimes just to decide, okay, this is it. If we, if we just uh, talk endlessly that should this be like this or this, we will never get anything done. So that's why we, we need to need to uh, decide what is, what is good. And I think this one, this one works really, really well. And then we have another quite classical image of when we're talking about black and white shadow and light. And I think this, these type of images are, are, you know, they're classical because they're good. And, and as I said earlier, also that how important small things are in an image. Okay. There are some people here, but those are not interesting, but without this family, most likely a family here, this, the father and the mother and the kid, it would not be that interesting. There would, wouldn't be anything. And then I was, uh, when I was looking at this image, I was wondering that what if they had walked a bit more in the, in the, in the light? Not sure. That's something of course that the, the photographer cannot control unless he told or yeah, he, he told them that, uh, you should walk there then it's a different thing but most likely that's not the case let me see what he said about uh, uh let's see yeah uh, it's oliver rice i've taken this picture last week at the train station world trade center new york at 2 p.m afternoon yeah so it's most likely a a um, kind of like a candid shot than just uh, you know being there and, and looking at things going the way you want and this is also something that to get an image like this in most cases you need to wait for a long long time just stand there and, and with your camera look around and see what happens and, and that, that that's that's always a good thing just to kind of like stay in one spot when you see something like I was talking earlier about the pre-visualizing the thing is to do you have this scene and then you're just wondering if this image would be good if someone would walk there or three people would walk there and then most likely if you're patient enough it will happen and, and sometimes it's not possible to wait but if you have the time then just do it most of the time photography is just waiting waiting and waiting uh, let's see what else. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Yeah, this one also. I was uh, a bit thinking about this. Is this light and shadow? But then, then I decided that, yeah, it is light and shadow enough because you have the the girl in the light and then you have some shadow and then you have another people there almost in the light and that's something to uh to to all makes this image interesting and you have different layers you get the bright part then you have a darker part then you have a bright background and it's it's an interesting in that sense and also the the moment that you took the photograph is really nice and what what you said about the image was this was wesley thorne taken an uh, taken on Olympus Pen F Mono in the city of Wells, UK. Rainy Sunday afternoon, my daughter was wanting to go home and not enjoying the weather. I was trying to capture some of the people with their umbrellas up in the rain, but I think this shot captured the mood of the day well. Yeah, I can, you know, with the story, and this is probably a very important image for you, and, and I, I, I can see why, because the, the mood and... You know, it's it's always like I said earlier that if if you're walking with someone and trying to photograph, usually the other other you know people that you're with get bored, and and that's of course with the kids, same thing, and with wives too. <laughs> you know, and, and that that's but but uh, what I like about this image is the two persons in the background. You can see the girl right in the front in thinking, and yeah, looks bored, has some some uh, bribe. You probably bribed her to to be with you there with with the candy or or chips or whatever that is and then you waited and got the kind of like the the situation well made this could be a very good street photo or street photograph too because it's it has kind of like a not i wouldn't say it's a decisive moment but there is something towards that side and, and i really like and, and kind of like the black and white kind of goes that way too that it's but I think it, it it qualifies for for light and shadow, even though it's not that obvious. 
but I like the image anyways. And then we have this uh, woman in the, in the tunnel in Taiwan. This was Chan KS from Malaysia took this image. And yeah, light and shadow, really nice. And what I like about this is that the the light is not uh, or or is hitting her her face or, or or the eyes. Sorry, the eyes, so that the 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 black uh, shadow would go towards her eyes. Even though that would have been also interesting, a bit different image. But I I, I really like this and and. What's good about this is that the the face of the of the lady here is the brightest part of the image, which we will see immediately. Then we start looking at the other shapes and we start realizing what's going on here. It's probably a kind of like a under the tunnel, and then the the, the sun is coming from most likely up up above here. Maybe the top part is a bit too much. Maybe I'm not sure if I would. <clears throat> not not sure. If I would crop the top away a bit and maybe narrowing it a bit, not really sure that that would be something that you could could try. But uh, a great image again, and and also what I like about this is the perfect uh, time to click the shadow because of the hands and the and the legs that it's really walking, and then kind of like looks like she's going really determined somewhere and doesn't even notice you when you're taking the image. And, and it still kind of like freezes the moment, but still, uh, what's funny about this? For some reason, it, it was probably the expression of the of the lady that it there is some like movement in this image too, even though it's it's a still image and very uh, fast shutter speed, so that you will you don't have any motion blur here. But still, there is in a kind of like a sense of motion. Maybe it's the the shadows that makes it, and the, and the, or the shadow and light here that makes kind of like the movement. It's looks like there is some some motion blur because of the the shadows but there isn't it's a very interesting image very interesting image yeah i like it i like it a lot and then we'll go to to florian harner and this one was really really interesting and i was like like what's going on but let me read here the image shows a mclaren senna and its driver with the sunset over the london skylight in the background it is part of a series of images macros are made with Lego sets. Yeah, this is um, something that uh, a lot of people do. They they have these uh, you know small Lego uh, figures and, and some stuff and and what they do is um, make these um, uh, kind of like miniature worlds, which are which are really interesting. I've tried sometimes done that too. I used to have uh, a small Lego figure with me on my trips and photographed the guy. He was like a pho photographer and, and, and made him do some photography in different places of the world. And, and, and you know, uh, in a way like this, with with real real uh, places. But uh, you know, we haven't been able to travel for for a long time now, so that project is is gone for now. But I will probably start if if I have a possibility to to, to travel again. And yes, uh, McLaren is very familiar. I think Mika Hakkinen won the world championship in Formula One in a McLaren, I think, a few years. Well, that's a long time ago. And yes, this is something that um, you can always do when you don't have, you know, when let's say that's a bad weather or you just can't go out there, hopefully no more lockdowns in any, any place in the world. So, so this is something that you could do in, in your spare time, if you have some Legos around, just try to be creative and build something and, and make make miniature worlds and try to try to make photos of those. And I think this this one is a bit uh, is a bit odd image, but I like it. In, and it's an interesting way of of uh, doing the shadow and light. And this is uh, I wanted to show this because it some, was something different, and it still had the shadow and light on it. All right. Let uh, let us continue. Okay, then we have the silhouette of the giraffe. This is from Namibia, if I'm correct. And Patrick from Belgium was was uh, the photographer. This one is definitely light and shadow. What I would do is to crop it a bit to make it more cinematic and do it a bit more. Uh, what do you call this? Um, like like sixteen by nine. So I would cut from the bottom, not maybe from the top. Because there's quite a lot of uh, stuff in the front, 
and I would cut this out and you can you, I'm not sure if you can see the yeah you can see the 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 legs of the of the giraffe in the in the live stream but um, but it is there so you, oh you can of course they're there but you can see them and if you could cut from the top from the bottom a bit then this would be a, a bit more cinema cinematic the composition is great it's it's rule of thirds and and the silhouette is perfect tack sharp and perfect and then you have the brightest part here and some light light rays from the sky here too which 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 kind of like makes the silhouette even more interesting not sure about the tree over here it is uh, uh, most likely a good thing because when we see this first we start looking around and this kind of like bounces our eye back so it doesn't kind of like fall out of the image so it's kind of like framed in that way and also we, we have this dark here so it's kind of like uh, making a vignette around the giraffe which is uh, which is quite good yeah let's see if there are any comments uh, yeah not really no yes but uh, yeah uh, i would probably crop it a bit but yes we can see definitely light and shadow on this one and then we have uh, uh this one is uh, uh boogie gurch taking this image and uh, this is a really good uh example of of how to use light and shadow we can see that the sun is shining on this bright green tree and the background is in the shadow and that's because it's in the shadow and it's a bit bluish it looks like it's further away and it's darker it will make this tree pop up or pop out because of two things the color the light and of course the contrast to the background and this is a really beautiful image these flares, totally fine, makes it interesting. You have a small reflection too, which is really interesting. You have bright lights here. And then one thing I didn't figure out is that what is the blue? Is there some kind of a smog or what, what that blue thing is? It, it looks okay. I'm not saying that, but I couldn't really figure out if, if it's a tree that is like that or not. I'm not really sure. But it looks interesting. I really like the color contrast on this because that that makes the the or, or is it it is a kind of like a very good representation of of light and shadow because you have the bright subject with the, on a on a dark background and it's a beautiful spot too but this wouldn't be anything without the light light makes this image to be a good image without the light it would be boring okay then we have then we have actually this is the last image we have uh, Mark, Marco Hertog with the LED flashlight uh, with a LED flashlight you get a beautiful shadow of this light bulb so I wanted to make a special photo of it this uh, image was made with th of three images merged to one the first image has a sharp light bulb second image has the sharp shadow and the third image was uh, for the black underground this uh, this is the best way to make this photo. The lamp was broken, but I made glowing wire in Photoshop. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, and this is a a cool composite image. Very surreal image, which first when you look at it, it looks pretty odd, but uh, the way it's made, it's 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 totally great. I'm really sure about the the slight yellow glow here. Maybe it is something something. Uh, that makes the image better or not because this looks like a black and white image even though it, it is not because there are some some blue shadows on the steel here or, or, or the metal here but this is really interesting shadow that it makes and it, as as he said it's made out of three images you have one image here one here and then you have the the bottom bottom here and this probably came from the the LED that was uh, lit from from this side from this side of the image because yeah it has to be of course because the, the the shadow is on this side and then this one was made with with photoshop i'm not really sure if it's uh 
how natural this is. There should have been a bit more glow around it and 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 some some uh, light on these and some light here. So so maybe adding some glow to this image would would make it a bit better. Now it's a not as it's best with with this with this, but uh, having this is uh, something that you really need because otherwise it would be a bit odd but where does the light come from that that's why it's important to to kind of like light up the the light bulb and i really like these these uh shadows or or the not the shadows but the light that comes comes here but yeah as you saw stunning images really really good and i think the 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 set of these images were the best best images that that has been on my live streams and and if you have any questions or comments please i still have still have some time we've been here an hour and a half this went a bit faster and uh, yeah and this is actually actually one good point is that um best feedback session thank you so much it is good to have more time until submission it improves creativity and quality and totally agree and that's why i did it because i realized that you know having the the assignment on friday and then live stream on tuesday and you only have the weekend and then what people ended up doing was just send something and they didn't really put their m mind into it but now when i looked at these images they were the best images so far that been sent as 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 an assignment so as a whole and that's why probably because of the more time there was all those i think three or four weeks time the amount of images was was around i think it was 65 so it's a bit less than usual sometimes it'd be even 90 images but this was 65 but it doesn't matter if the quality is so good so it's probably better to do this way and i'm really glad that that um, you could send these images and, and and with this high quality and, and this is really really made my day oh rob trek hi there hi everyone what's this while cooking lunch great images today thank you for your feedback today peter yeah well very welcome and i hope what did you cook rob All right, thanks, Rick. Today has been a real visual treat. I'm looking forward to having a longer look on the replay. Yes, that's that's also another thing to go back to the to the live stream and and you know you can go back and forth and look at the images if 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 if, if, if you feel like it. <laughs> Rob Trek cooking. I don't know if that's that's a thing. Don't we all cook? Uh, Yeah, and yeah, this is also, I was choosing from really old photos, but next time I will try to do something specific for the assignment. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's actually the, the point of this uh, is that if you can do that, that's a good thing because then you have to kind of learn. It's easier to go back to your old images and just pick something, but uh, actually creating it for the assignment is, is good practice. I think the most important thing is uh, to practice and make that image. Of course, if you can make it as good so that it can... Uh, make the cut and and be be uh, f given feedback on the live stream it's of course it's a bonus but making the image and then learning from that is is also very important so please do that try to do that i appreciate that let's see Okay, here is what he is cooking. Chicken eggplant with broccoli and oyster sauce with long grain rice. Oh, sounds good. Hope you enjoy your lunch. Ian, let's see if we do have some more questions. If not, then I might uh, start uh, wrapping this up, but I will reveal the next assignment. Also, But there's one thing I have to say. What we did with Matti Sulanta this week. We started planning a workshop here in Finland, August 2022. And if you're interested in that, please 
follow our channels and our social media to to find out more but it's going to be a week of photography here in helsinki we will limit the the people only to 12 because we want to give each of each on every one some personal feedback and and you know in a week it's you can't have more than 12 but uh, keep on watching our channels to to find out some more about that let's see any ideas on what's next yes i do have an idea for that it's going to be sounds easy but it's going to be hard and here we have the next assignment will be colors and when that will be i can't really say because there might be a slight change on this assignment i might do that with uh, in cooperation and collaboration with a social media site called glow stars which is a finnish uh, image sharing platform which is a very interesting and i will talk about that in my video tomorrow so there will be more information but start thinking about colors i will make a video about colors before i i make the assignment and we'll have the three weeks again so that you have time to make those images but i have to thank you now because i have to go unfortunately i would be love to talking to you a bit more but i have some other things that i just have to do which is a pity but i want to thank you so much for being here and sending those images and unfortunately i could not show all those images that were sent you know there was only like half of the image that i got was chosen this time it's usually around the 30 30 images that i will choose and thank you so much for for your comments and everything and especially for the images i'm, I'm really really happy that uh the the quality of the images was so high you really put your heart into this and the imagination it, i really appreciate that because it's it's a lot more fun to give feedback to to images that i see that you have really given some thought when you were making those images and al also the stories that you that you wrote were were better than before because there were some you know more in depth when you were talking about the images so i think the three week time between the the assignment video and the live stream is a good good idea but i have to say that thanks for watching and bye for now <laughs>